Now we're going to look at accessing data from XML. We've used methods like get elements by tag name, get element by ID to get at parts of an HTML document, but now we're going to look at how to do the same sort of thing with an XML document. So I have here a script that's set up. I have at the top a couple of arrays, one for names, one for emails. There's four names, four emails, and I'm going to convert that into an XML document, much like on the accessing XML page. There's going to be a people tag inside of that, two person tags, or rather four person tags, Inside of each person tag, there will be an ID attribute, or there could be an ID attribute, and then we can have a name and an email tag inside of each of those person tags. This bit of code here at the top, from lines 6 through 19, this is the code that is going to create an XML document. Now, this isn't something that we typically would do. Most of the time, we're going to use AJAX, and we're going to load an XML file from the web server. Because we haven't gotten into Ajax yet, I'm just going to build a document, an XML document that we can work with. Alright, so first line here, document implementation .create document. that will create an empty XML document for us. Data is going to be the root tag. Document create element people. So this is the same as in HTML. In the HTML, we are creating elements like paragraph, span, div, things like that. Here we're creating one called people. Same sort of process. We are creating an element, but we're just giving it a name that doesn't exist within HTML. We're making up our own tag. We're going to... Right here, there's data. Get elements by tag name data. This was the root tag that we created up here in the create document command. We're going to get the first data tag on the page, which is the root one. Inside that, we're going to append the people tag. So we create a people tag and we append that inside this brand new document that only has the one tag, the data. That's the one tag that we've created. Now we create people, put that inside. We're going to look at the number of names inside the names array. So names.length, that's the property that every array has that tell us how many elements are inside of it. There's four, so we're going to loop. We're going to do a for loop and loop four times. Person, document create element person. Same sort of process. We're also going to create a name and an email tag. The person tag is appended inside the people, and then the name and the email are going to be appended inside the person. And inside the name and the email tag, we are going to actually take from the array the name and the email. So the first name, first email goes into the first name and email tag. The second name and email go into the second tag. And so on, until we've got all four populated. All right, now, scroll down here a little bit. Our window on load function. We can do all this stuff up here before the page is even loaded because we are building an external XML file. So we're building something that's outside of the structure of our document. That means we can do it before the page is loaded. Window on load, when we finish loading the web page, we will run this function. Okay, so I'm creating a variable here called people. Now I've already used that variable up here. This one is global. This one is local. This one only exists inside this function. Now, it's a bad convention for me to use the same name, but because it's just a simple example, I'm not going to worry about that. I can say get elements by tag name. That's the method that I want to use. Now, normally what we would do here is we would say document.get elements by tag name, but we are not looking at the document, which is our web page. What we are looking at is the one that we created up at the top here, line 6, XML doc. That is the new XML file that we created. When we start working with Ajax, we'll see that we're using a different variable. We're using the file that gets returned from the web server, and on that object, 
that XML doc object or whatever the variable is that we use for it, we will be calling get elements by tag name on this. I want to find all the person tags. There we go. So console dot log people dot length. This is going to tell me how many person tags are on the page. Now I'm expecting that there should be four. Inside this XML doc object, there should be four person tags. That's what we're looking for. Now this command we may not have seen before, console.log. In Firefox, if you have Firebug installed in Opera, in Chrome, we have this JavaScript console accessible to us in the newer versions of Internet Explorer also. This console object is actually something that we can write to. So instead of having a series of alert boxes that pop up again and again and again, we can just load things into this console. Down here at the bottom, this is the JavaScript console right here. So I'm going to refresh my page. There it is, four. I wrote console.log people.length. That was my array. If I put something else in there, console.log XML doc to string. To string is a built in method that you can call on any object. It just means take this object and write out the string equivalent of that object. So I'll save it, come back here, refresh our page. There we go. Four was our length. Object document. So that's the XML document. That's what we're looking at, that XML doc. Inside there, if I wanted to look at, let's say, the person or the people tag, that was the first tag inside there. You can look at the first child property. The first child inside of our XML document is the root tag. That's that people tag. Look at that object element. So it is an, a document element node. Just like a paragraph is an element node, a div is an element node, this people tag is an element node. Alright, so we looked at get elements by tag name, that works. In XML we can't use the get element by ID, that's not going to work for us, but we can always use get elements by tag name. If I look at one of those, so there's the first, and first person tag. I can chain on to the end of that, get elements by tag name again, and get an array of name tags. Put that on the end. There is the first name tag. And then we can get node name. Let's put this in the console.log. it we will get another thing here first child that is equivalent to what we did right here name is the first tag that is inside of people so when I ask for the first child I'm actually going to get this name tag so all that is the equivalent of this node name. That's the tag name. If you have an element node, you can ask for the node name. There we go. Name, name. Same thing. Alright. One more command in here. I'm going to get the second person tag. Now we can say first child. There's also an array called child nodes. This is very similar to first child. If I say child nodes number zero, that is the very first one. If I say one, that's going to be the second one. Remember, with arrays, we start counting at zero. So child nodes one dot node name. That is 
see it refresh and there we go email email is the second child inside of well any one of the person tags and one last method here console.log Two, so that's the third person tag. First child. Now, I'm just going to cut this off for one second. Third person. That's what this is. people too. That's the third person. First child inside of it. It's going to be the same as this one. That's the name. So I'm going to call the variable third person name. Console.log third person name dot node name. That should give me name again. So right after email there should be name again. There it is. Excellent. All right. And one more thing. Third person name. There's another property that we can access. We've looked at child nodes. We've looked at first child. Get elements by tag name. There's also a next sibling and a previous sibling that allows us to move backwards and forwards. And then we can get its node name. So we should get email showing up again after this. So it'll be email name email at the end. And there we go. So as you can see, there's lots of different ways that we can access the different parts of an XML document. Same way we're going to access the HTML. We just don't have access to the get element by ID.